Hello, welcome to Wingscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips and in this tutorial we'll be looking at creating tessellations and tilings such as the ones you can see here. Now the key to these is starting with polygons or regular polygons of equal side lengths. I'll just scroll across and show you a document, an Inkscape document that I'll be leaving a, a, a link to in the video description. Now I've created these uh, polygons with equal side lengths of 10 millimetres. I've said uh, 30 millimetres up there, that was correct because I had to change it to fit more in. I type T with the text tool and edit that to correct it on the fly here now. Now I created these um, using the polygon tool in Inkscape over here. You can see that um, you know, if I want to create a, an octagon I can leave eight sides and drag out there. But a couple of things that um, I've done over here is that I've lined them all up so that they're sitting on a flat base and also I've readjusted the width and height. If I click the select tool, you can see there are different width and heights. Uh, I've adjusted those widths and heights through a trigonometric calculation so that the uh, side lengths are all 10 millimetres. So you don't have to do that if you use this document. Now, for example, if I wanted to produce a tessellation involving um, octagons and squares such as the one over here. I can just grab an octagon, control C, let's move over here and paste, oh, and grab a square, what colour did I use here, yellow square, well it doesn't matter, just click this one, control C and control V, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Now. I'll turn on the snapping tools and you can try different combinations of snapping tools to get things to work best for tessellations and tilings but uh, I find this intersection snapping and cusp node snapping are the most useful. For example if I bring this square over here it snaps on quite nicely. If I want to duplicate control D and then control drag across you can see I can do that. Likewise again with the square control D and drag across. If I hold down shift and control, I can select two of those squares, control D to duplicate, and then move them across there, or up there, and so on. Uh, likewise, click on an octagon, shift click to select two, control D to duplicate, and keep control D and duplicating, and you can continue to build up a tessellation, like so. Now this wasn't too bad because the squares didn't have to be rotated, they just slotted into position quite nicely. But uh, if I wanted something like, uh, this is a tiling pattern, squares and hexagons don't tessellate by themselves, they need uh, rhombuses and triangles in between to complete a tessellation. But uh, let's start with a hexagon and the square, and I'll show you how I manipulated those. I've already got a square so I'll just get a hexagon from say down here. Control C, move across to, I'll zoom out to find where I was, yep, there, and Control V to do the hexagon. I'll just grab one of those squares, Control C, Control V. Now, again, I'll just check over here. Yeah, around every face of the hexagon, I want a square. So these ones are okay, Control D, drag and get them there. But what about these other faces? I'll control C, oops, I'll leave that one there, and then control V, and I'll just hook it onto this corner here. But if I click again, I can drag the center of rotation to that corner and then drag this rotated around. So that's one technique I find useful as well. Another way I could have done that is to click that, control D, and using the left square bracket one, two rotations, you can see that that could have got it into that position there. I'll drag that one down there. Then you can use reflection tools for example, while that's selected, reflect in a vertical axis, well, control Z, control D to duplicate first, then reflect in a vertical axis and put it over here. Likewise, control D to duplicate, reflect and drag it over here. 
once I've got that unit I can control, um, drag a marquee around and control G to group it and then control D to duplicate the whole group and perhaps move it up there, control D, I know I'm overlapping some shapes here, control D and so on but uh, you still get the, the effect oh, I've just realised that uh, this isn't quite the tessellation I had over there because I didn't have them overlapping before so if I just drag things around you can see now do one more control D to duplicate you can see now I've got the one that has rhombuses and triangles in between but you can uh, play around and you can find uh, lots of interesting designs this way so then I'm well on the way to producing this tessellation here if you've got a shape that uh, doesn't um, have quite as convenient angles such as a pentagon I'll just um, show you down here actually I'll grab a pentagon from here control C and control V zoom in now if I wanted to attach pentagons what did I do over here around well you know in a ring there but I uh, don't have to reproduce that one exactly but uh, control D to duplicate and I might sort of attach those corners again click and the rotation center oh, some of the sometimes they can be in strange places because I've done other things or you've done other things this little red cross I'll drag that to there and it snap on make sure that it's highlighted so it will snap and then click twice if you lose it and snap on that way Control D to duplicate again. If I click a second time, the center rotation is still there, so I don't have to move it, and I can move around like so. If I wish to change the color of uh, any of the shapes, it's just a matter of clicking on them, one of them, and hitting the color down there. If you are only dealing with one design, you want to change the shape throughout. I just Control Z. What you can do is while one selected go to edit select same fill color or fill and stroke it will select them all and you can hit the color and change them all at once so just snapping corners and rotating can get things into the right position or uh, in this case over here I shouldn't have done this so far away uh, reflecting squares in vertical axes or whatever so there are some things you can do, but the main key to all this is having a document with uh, regular polygons of equal side lengths, which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. Once again, thanks for watching.